Most prisoners will tell you they don't expect the red carpet when they're behind bars. However, because there's not enough workers, some say it's getting to a boiling point mentally. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez sat down with a former inmate and a therapist who volunteers in multiple prisons to bring a new perspective to the issue. Ariana? Yes, we've heard from the director of the Nebraska Correctional Services, a prison prison workers, union reps, senators, and a wife of a prison worker. Today, I spoke with Samar Atkins, who was released from prison a few years ago for three felony charges. He still is in contact with those on the inside. I'm in um, almost like weekly contact with on inmates um, that's incarcerated. And uh, I mean, you know, they're doing the best they can to uh, try to maintain through this uh, crisis. But I mean, at the same time, um, it's having definitely have a toll on uh, like their, their mental health. Because there's not enough prison workers, for the most part, inmates are in their cells 24 hours a day, Friday through Sunday. And that includes not having visitation on those days. Atkins friends on the inside say it's not only hard to not see family, but it's causing friction between inmates and their loved ones. The majority of the family members, they're prone to believe the administration. They're prone to believe, okay, Maybe y'all must not be doing something right. That's why they're canceling your visits. That's why you're on lockdown. But then you have the inmates saying, no, we're not doing nothing wrong. You know, I'm doing everything I can. You know, I'm not in segregation. I'm on the yard. I don't have no infractions, anything of that nature. So it creates a little friction between the family member and the inmate. And a lot of times, you know, the family members, you know, they get discouraged. And um, some of them, you know, they want to give up. Something Senator McKinney brought up during the last hearing was early release for the inmates who qualify. You have 5,300 people in prison today. You do the math, it's $40,000 for one person to spend a year in our state penitentiary. An alternative to spending that money on inmates is to spend it on other programs. Before you end up going to prison, they divert you into a program where you can get mental health, uh, substance abuse treatment, uh, counseling and close supervision and support to help you get a job and to reestablish a restorative justice. The director of the state's prison system says they are more than 600 workers short right now. Many say at the moment there doesn't seem to be a clear solution. And I listened to Director Frake's testimony and I've never seen, I've worked with him, communicated with him about things that we can change, and he's really receptive to that. I've never seen him. He was almost waving the white flag. He just really can't figure out what he can do to, to do rehabilitation and make conditions livable in the prisons with the staffing levels that he's got. Something else Paul Fieldman is concerned about is how not seeing family and not getting as much time outside on top of other things can drastically impact mental health, as there have been at least 23 suicide attempts in the last 10 months. Now, Ariana, I'm sure there are people out there watching right now saying, you know, who cares? They broke the law, they get what they get. Well, some state senators and the union rep have said that this is not only causing more mental issues for the inmates, it's making for a more dangerous atmosphere for the guards and prison staff. All right.